Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Stigma Free Society's Facebook Live event. My name is Jerry Friesen, also known as a recovering farmer. I am a stress and conflict management specialist working out of Manitoba. Because of my own journey with mental illness, I have a real passion in talking about it because it isn't talking to others that we can find a path forward for ourselves. You can learn more about me by visiting jerryfriesen.ca. Through this Facebook Live event, I am representing the Stigma Free Society, which is a Canadian registered charity that aims to reduce stigma of all kinds with a focus on mental health. This event is a part of their Rural Mental Wellness Toolkit, an online community-based mental health program that creates access to mental health education and peer support training, as well as practical and relatable resources for those living in rural and agricultural communities. You can find the toolkit at ruralmentalwellness.com. I'm excited today to have the opportunity to chat with Tracy Wood, uh, I've chatted with Tracy Wood previously, and I'm really intrigued with what she does. Welcome to the show, Tracy. Thank you for having me. Before we jump into questions, I'm going to introduce you, and I should have printed this a little smaller so I couldn't read it at all, I suppose. Tracy Wood is a born and raised farm girl and is passionate about the people in our agricultural communities. As an equine gestalt coach, Tracy sees her clients as whole, capable individuals, and she, along with her horse partners, support clients as they unearth experiences that may be leaving them feeling stuck in life. Growing up in the field of agriculture, Tracy offers clients a familiarity and deep understanding of where they are coming from in their journey. Tracy operates Touch of Equine just from, from just from her farm in rural Portage La Prairie in Manitoba. Welcome, Tracy. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Jerry. So is it equine or equine? Whatever way you want to say it. Okay. Yep. And, and that's never mind Gestalt, but we're going to get there. I used to talk German, but I'm not sure if I... I yeah, you did. I did okay? You did it. Yeah, you got it. Gestalt. Oh. Okay, so can you start off by telling us a bit more about how you got into the field of equine gestalt coaching? So I have had horses all my life, blessed to have horses in my life. And um, I knew from an early age that they were special and offered great gifts. And um, so they have been a part of my life. And uh I have had many roles in life, um, lots of support and mentorship roles. Um, we were foster parents for many years, my husband and I, and that's where I really saw how the horses could step up and help some of these kids that were, were um, staying with us and living with us. And that was that kind of started my journey of, of kind of digging deeper into the horse healing world. Um, I have my equine assisted learning facilitation um, certification that I had uh, back in 2014, I believe. And I was craving a deeper understanding and a deeper knowing of how horses could help heal people. And that's where um, I found uh, Touched by a Horse. They're based out of Elizabeth, Colorado. And uh, I began that journey in 2020. And uh, it was a two-year intensive training program, um, weekly courses, traveling to the States for trainings. Um, yeah, and, and it was absolutely everything that I dreamed it would be. And now I'm here doing it. <laughs> That's interesting. And, I, and, I, I, and I'm sure we're going to hear about it, but that, that whole connection, and we've heard before about about people having connections with animals in certain ways. You know, we have, um, oh, now the name won't come to me, but, but uh, support animals and, and people yeah, have yeah. dogs. And, and I've, I've heard about this connection with horses as well, but I, I find that really intriguing. Mm -hmm. the, the horses are truly, um, they are a spiritual animal. Um, they are deeply connected. And really, they're actually deeply connected to agriculture. 
horses. Okay. They, they tilled our soils. They um, have been with us through the test of time and are truly connected to people and, and how we have evolved over time. And now their um, role has changed. Their, their role is now um, that of the healer. Um, and with myself, that is the role of my partner in, in the work that I do. And being that they're prey animals, um, they live in the moment. And their number one priority in life is to be safe. And so when we're working with the horses, um, they really, um, they challenge us to get out of our heads and into our bodies. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Oh. Yeah. So why was it important to you to provide this kind of mental health support to folks in agricultural communities? Well, it, it's important to me because I am part of the, a part of agriculture and uh, I experience, I have experienced it firsthand. Um, the challenges that um, farmers and producers go through every single day um, firsthand in that I've seen family members um, struggling. Um, I've shared this with you, Jerry, like last April, what we experienced um, multiple storms, snowstorms that came through Manitoba while we were calving. And it was a difficult time here on the farm for my husband, for my son, for myself. We were all in it and in it in different ways. And um, I still see, I saw it last week as we had more um, storms coming through, the tension starting to come up again, thinking back to last year and is this going to be as bad as it was last year? Because it was bad. So uh, that's why I, I know firsthand and I have those experiences that I can connect with fellow producers and know where they're coming from. I'm not going to tell them, oh, you need to take a break. You need to have a vacation. You need to take a vacation. I know that oftentimes that's not possible. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, yeah. And, and, that, and, that, and that one point you made, Tracy, and I think it's so important. And, and next week is, is actually CMHA's Mental Health Week, and, and their focus is on stories. And we all have a story to tell. And I, I think the point you just made that we don't often realize, I had to learn this the hard way, is, is how stress, how worrying about what's going on, whether it's snowstorms or whether it's excessive moisture in spring, whatever the stressors may be, the impact it has on relationships with, with the people we work with, the people we're married to, the people we're partners with, and, and our kids as we all try and work together. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. It, <clears throat> it's, uh, you know what, Jerry? I'm going to be honest with you right now. I'm feeling a little stressed. <laughs> I love okay. this on Facebook Live because um, my computer is going to run out of power. My power cord came unhooked. So can you bear with me as yeah, I that do that? Happy. I apologize. Oh, no worries. <laughs> I love Facebook Live. Here we go. <laughs> oh you my know what? goodness. It's better that, Tracy, than if you would have just completely disappeared off my screen. Yeah. <laughs> so I appreciate that honesty. That's not a problem. Yeah, that was, you know, I was all getting things set up today and getting things organized. And then about five minutes in, I was like, oh, I'm going to lose power. You know, and is it that that's just what life is all about, right? And that's what life is about on a farm. And that's what life is like with, with family. Like what we yeah. think we're prepared and suddenly we are caught by surprise. And, yeah. and guess what you told me? You told me, you know what, Jerry, I'm a little stressed right now. And, and that's what happens when life yes. events happen. Yeah, you got to go with the flow. And, and that's even too, that's how um, the sessions with the horses go. 
um, the sessions are so unique with the horses. Um, when, when clients come out to see me, we meet for approximately 90 minutes and the sessions flow where they need to go. Yeah. And, and we, there's no set agenda and I meet clients where they are in that moment. Yeah. And, and everybody's different, aren't they? That is absolutely, absolutely correct. Yes. Yeah. I, I go through the same thing in the work I do with mediation work is it's not cookie cutter. It's, it's, you have to adapt and work with each individual as they come up. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also creating that sense of um, safety in, in that space. And, and even in this moment too, like having, knowing that I'm safe to say, Hey, I need a time out for just a moment while I get things reset so we can keep going and have this interview. So that's great. Okay. So having said that, and you've just basically answered my next question by not answering it. So, <laughs> so let, I, I know everybody's different, but I told you before we started, I said, well, I, I, I think I need therapy today. Mm -hmm. uh, I said it somewhat facetiously, although not entirely, because I think I probably could do with a therapy session every mm -hmm. day. But so if I came to you, Tracy, can you can you give me a brief walk through of what that would look like? I can give you a very brief outlook of what that would look like, Jerry. Yes, because like I said before, they're so in the moment and flow where the energy goes. So when when if you were to come to see me, you're going to arrive at the farm, going to say hello. Um, one of the horses will be in a round pen, and we'll have a couple of chairs set um, on the outside of the round pen. So in this program, there's no riding. So there, you don't have to have any horse experience when we're doing the equine gestalt. And we're gonna sit down and we're gonna connect and I'm gonna meet you where you are in the moment. And we're gonna go through and we're gonna just see what comes up. And um, I'm there to connect with you. I'm there to listen deeply and all the while, I will be looking to my equine partner to see if he's giving me any clues as to what might be going on with you as well. Oh, wow. Now, mm -hmm. now I'd like to dive deeper into this. <laughs> okay. Because now I hear you telling me that the horses talk to you. <laughs> they do. <laughs> okay. okay. Can you share a little more about that? So... Horses are, because they are prey animals, they are um, deeply connected to nature. They are very energetic animals. Like they can sense energy. They can sense um, an approaching animal long before we could ever um, um, sense them. Um, and they are masters at um body language they really? can teach us so much about body language yes yeah so um they can they can sense energy in a person um we actually kind of have this term that they they are equidectectors so they can kind of tell when a person isn't telling the truth or being their most authentic self um they often will because that's not safe for them. So if someone's not being truthful, they're they're not feeling that sense of safety. So they will, they can and they will disconnect from a conversation or an experience if they're feeling like they're not safe. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. So, and, and kind of, you've kind of answered this then, but perhaps put it into words for me. Why do you think working with horses is such an, no, sorry, before I go there, I was going to ask you something else. So we're sitting there, you're, you're getting signs from the horse, uh, but in essence, then you would be a counselor to me. I am not your, I'm going to be your coach. I am there. Okay to um to guide the process okay. and and to relay any information so what 
what really is that we're working on is we're trying to bring we are working on bringing into your awareness the answers that you hold within and that are out of your awareness. So asking thought-provoking questions, um, giving you, a, a most, a lot of it is giving you the space to actually be heard because there are so many people that come and sit across from me and it's the first time they've really ever been heard and listened to and not judged. And, and being in that space and, and then asking those questions really allows them to like dig deep and go, oh, well, I remember when that happened. Okay, so when that happened, how did you feel? Where did you feel that? And then it just goes from there. You know, and, and you've just touched on something I was talking about with someone just in the last few days. I have a cousin that's a, that's a professor at the University of Winnipeg. And a number of years ago, I asked him about what made him a successful teacher. And he says, you know what? I'm not a teacher. I, he said, I have these students. They all have the knowledge in them. I help them find it. And, that, and that's kind of what you're doing. Absolutely. Oh, yep. I love that. Yeah. So, okay, now I'm going to ask the question. And again, Tracy, you've probably answered this. But again, if you could put this into words, why do you think working with horses is such an effective therapeutic slash coaching technique? I, yeah, I have part, a little bit on that. Yes. They, because again, they are, um, the prey animals and because they connect to us so energetically, they do, they force us to get, they don't force us, but they challenge us to get out of our heads and into our bodies. Being in our bodies is a very foreign place to a lot of people. We don't give our chance, give ourselves the chance to feel. We think through things. We get caught up in that thought process. Um, they challenge us to be in the present moment, not thinking about what happened yesterday, not worrying about what's happening tomorrow. And we get into that present moment so that we can process. Um, it could be a past trauma. For instance, I'll just use um, last year's storms with, yeah. with um, livestock producers um, because a lot of them were experiencing death loss within their herds as calves were being born. And in that moment, there was no time to process what was going on. It was like, okay, there's been another loss. You pick up that animal, you move it out, and you move on because there's more coming and there's more coming and there's more coming. The storms pass and there's still no time to process what happened in the last three days because the to-do list is now even longer yeah. because, um, because of the storm plus of everything else that has to be done. So we tuck, we tuck those things away, right? We tuck, tuck it away in our back pocket and we're like, that's really not important or I'll deal with that another day. And we don't. Yeah. Because life goes on. So that's what this process does with the horses is that it allows us the space to um, bring light to what we've packed away. I did a little post the other day about um, burying versus being planted. You know, when we bury something, it's not always with a positive thing, right? We're burying an animal, um, a loved one that's passed away. It comes with a lot of feelings, could be grief, anger. When we plant something, we're coming into that season of planting right now in agriculture, right? <clears throat> and with that season of planting, there's been all the thought processes that, that go into that, you know, choosing the right seed and the rotation and the proper fertilizer to nurture that seed and give it every opportunity to grow. And there's that expectation that's going to come with that. Yes, there's some anxiety during um, seeding season, but, you know, it comes with a lot of that expectation that we'll be able to reap the rewards of, of that, um, of that planting. So, with when we bury these feelings there's days where 
there's something in life that triggers us. So I would say last week, the new storms coming were a trigger for um, people in our household here. <laughs> and those triggers can shed, you know, it starts to shed light on what we packed away. And all of a sudden we're feeling anxious and we're like, why am I anxious? I don't understand why I'm anxious. And it's so the horses and I help people figure out and answer their own questions of why am I anxious? Well, why are you anxious? When was the last time you felt anxious? And then we can go through some experiences um, that because this is all experiential learning. That's how when we experience it, we remember it and the learning stays with us. And um, yeah, that's, that's a big part of it. I hope I answered your question. Sorry, go ahead. I said, I hope I answered your question. <laughs> yes, you did. But it got me. I like the analogy you used about burying stuff. And, and we do that, right? We get busy. And, and in you, your case, you mentioned the calving and storms and how, you know, something happens and you can't deal with it in the moment. So you pack, pack it away, you bury it. Mm -hmm. yeah. But there's a message there. And that is if we're not proactive about the stuff we're burying, one day it can go boom. Boom. Mm -hmm. And in those moments, we react rather than respond. So we may react in anger. We may react by shutting down, um, having, you know, thoughts that aren't positive thoughts. Um, some people turn to substances in order to um, in order to work through or get through those those difficulties. So that's where if we can um, bring to light what we have buried and work through it. It's not that what happened isn't there anymore. The, the, ob the, the objective of what we're doing is to take away the, the trigger from yeah. what, what happened. Yeah. 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 Well, that's neat. So how is working with animals, horses in particular, supported your own mental health? Mm-hmm. And that, now I'm getting personal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, they are truly, um, they've been a part of my, my life since I was a kid. Right. Um, yeah. Spending time with them, you know, going through the teenage years and uh, big part of it was um, years ago when we had getting all emotional and, uh, we had a young girl that lived with us and um, when we were in, when we were fostering and um, she moved on to a different home and um, it was a, it was a really difficult time. And uh, the one horse that I had at the time that was actually a horse that she um, spent a lot of time with as well. Uh, I remember going out there one day and crying and, um, and he stood there with me and uh he allowed, he, he gave me the space to release those emotions. And, um, and it was really cool because I look back at it now and he knew when I was done. And I remember he just kind of picked up his head and he walked away and he kind of looked back at me and just kept walking kind of like, okay, hey girl, you got this, carry on and get going. So uh, they truly, yeah, they, they're, they're just, they're really amazing. Wow, Tracy, I appreciate you telling us that story and your vulnerability. Thank you. Um, I can, I can tell that it's, it, it's really been, it's, it's helpful for you to be dealing with, with animals, with horses, um, mm -hmm. and certainly had an impact on your own life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They are, they're so special and uh, their gifts are immeasurable. Yeah. 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 And it's so cool to hear about being able to, when, when, when you're feeling that emotion because of a life event and you have the ability to be able to find a way to, to deal with it. I hate using the word deal with it, yeah. but to, to make that connection so that you can move on with life as yep. well. Yep. 
and it, it's to and it's to work through it, right? Work through um, it. Yeah, not necessarily dealing with it, but it's to work through it because there's so many different emotions that can come up for um, individuals, and and they're and they're not wrong. There's nothing wrong with those emotions. It's how we can work through them in a positive way. Yeah. And in a healthy way. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, a, a question for you. You're in rural Manitoba. Mm -hmm. um, you're a farm girl, as I read it in the bio. <laughs> yeah. Are your clients primarily from rural Manitoba or are they urban as well? Uh, definitely urban as well. So uh, both rural and urban because I'm we're only about five five to seven minutes outside of Portage La Prairie. Um, I can, I can work with any individual that wants to um, better themselves. It could be through um, a life transition. It could be, you know, uh, an empty nester, a mom that spent her first career um, caring for her children and now they're moving on. And now she's kind of going, now what do I do? Yeah. And so I can help, people work through and discover um, what is their vision for the rest of their life? How can I get there? Um, what steps do I need to take? And so it's not only people in ag that um, I can work with. It's my heart lies with, yeah. with agriculture. So. So tell me Tracy. And, and again, the, the, the 30 minutes goes by way too quick. Can you make any general comments about the mental health space, what it's like in rural communities, where we could improve with that? Yeah, I think that things have really been improving in, in our rural communities. I believe that, yes, there is that stigma around um, people in agriculture, you know, we're tough, we're stoic, and we, <clears throat> we just keep grinding through. And I really believe that we're getting to a space that people are starting to, to talk more. And, and by talking about it, that's the first step is being able to reach out to somebody and talk to somebody. And there are like the uh, Manitoba Farmer Wellness Program. There's so many different provincial organizations that are coming and, and forming so that they can bring um, more um, resources for our ag communities. Because we do have some rural communities that maybe don't have access to resources as people do say in the larger centers. Um, so that is definitely, I see um, a definite improvement. And then, you know, we have um, a lot of our uh, influencers that are starting to talk about this more that are in the ag community. And that's really starting to shed a light on, on this, that it, it is real, this is real. And we are losing our producers yeah. to this. So, um, that's that's why I do what I do, and I know that's why you do what you do, and uh, it's and why it's so important. Yeah, and you know what? And maybe I'm talking out of school here, but but certainly with the Manitoba Farmer Wellness Program, you know, I, when I get donations in the mail and they're people I don't know, and they've just thrown a check in an envelope with a little note saying in memorandum memorandum in memory of so-and-so because obviously and, and one of them in fact and I like this language don't like what happened but like the language when they say you know what this person lost their battle with mental health and and so so anything people can do and of course I have over the last couple of years just being involved in this part of mental health and agriculture meeting people like you Tracy just is incredibly encouraging for me because as you well know in our conversation we've had previously that I used to farm and in that because of stress and ongoing other stuff you know I was I was diagnosed with anxiety and depression so when I when I hear people talking about it when I when I feel that enthusiasm from across Canada and I see what people like you are doing in our in our in in Manitoba it just 
it encouraged me and I like the direction it's going in. Mm -hmm. I, and I feel it's a way that we are connected and that we don't feel alone because yes. there's a lot of times we do feel alone. So it, it's, it's connecting us. It's bringing to light the struggles of many people in our industry. And I think that's the, the great stepping stones to, to working through this. Sorry. I wanted to make a note of what you just said and I couldn't find my, couldn't find my pen. Oh, okay, Tracy. It's thirty minutes. They're gone. Just like fast. Just like that. <laughs> so, tell us where people can learn more about what you do. Okay, so if you'd like to learn more about what I do, you can go to my website, which is touchofequine.ca, um, and you can also I'm on Instagram and Facebook at Touch of Equine. And um, feel free to reach out if you have any questions, um, are interested in, in a program. Um, I'm more than willing to answer your questions. Perfect. Thank you so much, Tracy. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for joining us today. I really your appreciate it. Your insights into mental health and wellness certainly have resonated with me. Um, just like to reiterate the fact, and, and you said it best, Tracy, I can't even read exactly what you said but number one about when people reach out uh, they, they build that connection they connect with others it's so very important that people understand the fact that they're not alone mm -hmm. and ultimately and we've talked about this over the last 30 minutes is is reaching out having the ability to talk about it um, like i said before we all have a story if we can find someone we can share that story with very often it's it's worth i know most times it's worth our while just talking to friends family neighbors um that's helpful but it's also okay to reach out and get more professional help and, absolutely and the work you do um counselors and i think it's important that everybody is aware of that and everybody has the freedom to do that absolutely i i agree with you Alrighty, thanks again. Right. And I'm just to our audience, uh, please avail yourself of the many resources available in the Rural Mental Wellness Toolkit, which can be found at ruralmentalwellness.com. So till next time, stay safe and stay well. Thank you. Bye-bye.